Coming up on Will Wilde's Outdoor Adventures. We start the fourth video in this series at 1,000 feet, climbing up to 3,000 feet. Much of the frost from the last video has melted, so it's gonna create a challenge on getting the fire started tonight. But I've taken some extra precautions and we'll be batoning some wood to get at the dry stuff. If adventure has a final and all-embracing motive, it is surely this. We go out because it is our nature to go out, to climb mountains, and to paddle rivers, to fly to the planets, and plunge into the depths of the ocean. When man ceases to do these things, he is no longer man. Wilfred Noyce.
I've taken a new sleeping bag liner from Coleman. It's a fleece liner that can be picked up for $17.99 on Amazon, and I really like it. From the reviews that I've read, a lot of people say it adds about 10 degrees, and I truly believe that. It was big enough that it fit the entire sleeping bag, and had a really actually nice zipper that I enjoyed. I normally don't enjoy zippers, but I enjoy when they don't get stuck. So that was awesome. Recommended purchase. After lunch, I began to process more downed trees for the shelter. I found some pine tree sap that can be used as a fire starter. Pine trees are one of the best trees to find in the wilderness when it comes to survival. Not only are the dried pine needles great for fires, sometimes known as pine pitch, is flammable and burns very well. Pine sap has been used to make candles, light sticks, and just normal fires among many other uses. I decided to move the fire back over to a large rock. After our last two trips, it was quite noticeable not having the heat reflection. It also seemed to make the area brighter as well, but that might just be me. After collecting some nice logs for the base of the fire, I was then off to get some more tinder and branches.
The dead and dry branches left on still standing trees was some of the driest wood in the area, so that was what was going to be put on the fire first. After about an hour of collecting wood, I got quite thirsty and realized I had made a massive mistake. I had left my water bottle at home. Now, this was a full moon that I was going out on, and as you know, full moons can cause crazy things. The police, the local fire department, and the hospital all report an increase in activity on full moons. And it's something I've noticed and throughout the last 15 years of my life as I've been paying attention to it. Normally on full moons, I stay at home and I play video games. But this time, I didn't pay attention to the moon cycle, and I decided to go backpacking instead. And it actually caused quite a bit of problems. So now I was off to collect some snow to start boiling water. This trip had actually gone kind of bad. At first I forgot my water. My phone didn't charge. I ended up getting sick and going home a day early. This was supposed to be a two-day trip. And then in the following morning, I got stuck in my tent. So to make sure we got fire this time and had no problems, I ended up doing some batoning. Many of you bushcrafters already know what this is, but this was my first time doing it. I collected some uh, nice, relatively dry wood and started the batoning process, opening up the wood to the dry inside so the fire would burn better. I also decided to try my first fire feather. Now, again, I'd watched a number of videos and this is not how you're supposed to do it, but you can definitely learn from my mistakes here. If you notice right out the gate, I was getting stuck on some knots. So 
I would recommend that you don't try to do a fire feather over a knot. You can see I'm getting stuck again there. I'm also, I believe, trying to take off too big of chunks. I don't know. The experts would have to tell me what I'm doing wrong here as well. Now, I had watched a number of videos, and I would never heard anybody say that you want to rotate the stick as you're making the feather. And I'll show you that in a moment. That makes it a lot easier. Again, you can see me getting caught on the knots. And again, it looks like I'm trying to pull off too big of chunks here. Now, right here, as you see that I'm twisting the wood a little bit, that definitely is crucial to making what would look like a better fire feather. Again, this is more of an example probably of how not to do it. But that's probably the best one that I made. I'm also kind of in a rush, so I'm not going to focus on this for too long. Again, you can see rotating the stick. I definitely think I manhandled these a little bit too hard and tried to take off too big a chunks. So people that are better at this than me, please uh, let me know in the comments what I was doing wrong. I have a lot of practice to go on this, I can tell. Well, rushing to get out the door, I made a grand mistake. Forgot to bring my drinking water. So, not too happy about that. Ah, man, I just always forget something. I've got all kinds of stuff here. Uh, I've got the, um, I've got some of the pine wax, or pine sap, and I've got a whole bunch of tinder over here. Gonna lay that down on the bottom. Our wood shavings from home. Probably. Probably only going to be able to spend one night up here. I wanted to do two, but my ch my phone won't charge on my big battery. I plugged it in and everything, and it's just it's telling me no.
We're gonna do what's called dragon breath. Normally when you blow the fire, it only looks like that. Put your fingers together. I think that's a difference. I cannot tell the difference with the dragon breath. Let's try it again. Without it? Nah. I think it just sounds cool. We'll definitely give it a try another time, but I'm trying to get some uh, water boiling. That way we can have something to drink, because I'm a moron. Oh, almost lost my fire starter. Don't want to be like Joe Robinette. If you are faced with a mountain, you have several options. You can climb it and cross to the other side. You can go around it. You can dig under it. You can fly over it. You can blow it up. You can ignore it and pretend it's not there. You can turn around and go back the way you came. Or you can stay on the mountain and make it your home. Vera Nazarian. The fire is the main comfort of the camp, whether in summer or winter, and is about as ample at one season as at another. It is as well for cheerfulness as for warmth and dryness. Henry David Thoreau
finally my headache is starting to go away. It's the worst thing in the world when you come out here to enjoy yourself and have fun and maybe even work a little and you just have pain. I'm also starting to relax. Really started freaking out when I realized I'd forgot my water bottle. The intention was always along to bring the extra water bottle that you saw me pour the snow into. That way I could have more water than I did last time. So I was really happy to have an extra water bottle so I didn't have to use my piss bottle. But nonetheless, I was still freaking out quite a bit because everything's a little bit more wet. And that's why you saw me throw all of my tinder on. So if we end up staying tomorrow, I, didn't, I don't have any stuff from home that I brought. brought. We're gonna have to make, it, make our own tinder. I was very happy and grateful to see that it fired up like it did. Now I brought a New York steak that's wrapped in a scent proof bag and I was going to cook that tonight over a spit but once I realized that I needed to get the fire going instead and it was all go time I needed to get water it wasn't just fire it was like now I need to get fire and melt water so that was just something that I wanted to do right away so tonight we won't be cooking the steak over the spit we'll just be making some soup uh, that I got from that company Legacy Premium that sends me all those those nice soups and instant meals one thing that I wanted to do is get the fire next to a rock again because I can't tell you how much of a difference it makes it makes such a difference you feel it coming back at you but it also lights up the area better too as well. So yeah, I'm kind of in that phase now where you're just kind of like relaxing because you don't have to move and everything's taken care of and everything's okay now and I got a bottle full of water and It's getting warm. It's getting really warm. This tarp has come in so handy. So, so very handy. I like to lay on it like I am now. And it was really nice to be able to pile all that snow on and carry it back. And I've carried wood with it before, so I highly recommend a tarp if you don't have one. And this tea is like the best thing I've ever had. It's got a little bit of sugar in it. It's one of those like berry, wild berry teas from like sleepy time or something like that. And it's just like I, I always say, like whenever you're out in the woods and you're tired and maybe even a little stressed out or something like that, it just tastes, everything tastes so much better. I had tried to make some fire feathers earlier and that just did not work. I don't know if it was because of the wood or, or what I was doing wrong, but it wasn't like I see the guys do on YouTube, so I'll have to, have to practice at that. One of the things that I wanted to talk about over this campfire, and if you ever have any topics or anything like that you want me to talk about, leave them in the comments below. Let me know, and I'll talk about it. I wanted to talk about what adventure is and what adventure means to you. And maybe you could tell me if 
about some of your adventures and what adventure means to you. When I first started this channel, and I called it Will Wild's Outdoor Adventures, I felt a little cocky with that name, a little overconfident. Like, are these really adventures? You definitely see a lot of channels that have the word adventure in it. And I wanted to make sure that we were actually having adventures. So at first, when I was just walking with my dog down to the river and stuff like that, I didn't really feel like I was having adventures. But the more you go out, and the more you experience nature, you're gonna end up having adventures. I think some of us, we might think about adventures like Indiana Jones, that were on the top of a speeding train and we're trying to get to the next car so we can save all the people or we're in a uh, ancient ruins and we're exploring the ruins and we're being chased by natives and we're having to swing from vine to vine to, to get away. I think that's your classic adventure. And I realized is getting as far as I have with the channel that really there actually is real adventure. We don't think of it as adventure because adventure sometimes when you're watching the movies, it's got music to it. And it, music really makes things feel different. And I've run into that bear and that was just, you know, it wasn't a big sighting or anything when we ran into it. But to me, that was adventure. When I walked up down the, or walked down the trail and I was gonna beeline and go to the other place and I started seeing the bear prints and decided just, you know what, no, nope, this is too much for me. I'm leaving. That was adventure. When I met the girl going, that, that was coming up on that same bear encounter and uh, she, she was gonna go up and I asked her if, you know, do you want me to go with you? Because there's a bear up there and I showed her the footage and and we went back deeper, deeper than when I saw the bear. That was adventure. Uh, when I found the bear in the cave, again, adventure. When, if, if you saw the cow video, there's a lot of you people that, you people, I don't mean it like that. There's a lot of you guys that have not seen my cow video at a cow encounter with a bunch of quote, curious cows. And there was about 40 of those curious cows getting way too close to me. And I wasn't having it. And um, that was, to me, real, like, that was like movie level adventure for me. I felt like I was going to die and you could have put any thumping movie epic soundtrack to that. And then for me, it would have fit perfectly. Uh, adventure could be running out of supplies and not knowing when you're gonna get water again. And that creates the, that tension when you're out there and you, you don't know when you're gonna get your supplies. So, I definitely think you can encounter real adventure. You just have to go out enough that something crosses your path, or something unexpected happens. So if you can, let me know what was what was your biggest adventure. What did you go on and say, you know what, you could have put a music soundtrack to that out of the movies and it, it would have fit perfect. What was your experience? Let me know in the comments. Love to hear it. Oh, I needed this. I was so thirsty. This cozy I made is coming in really handy. Otherwise, these titanium pots titanium anything it'll go cold super fast it'll get hot super fast so it really kind of insulated the heat it's not as cold as it normally is when I come up here the last three times I think it's about 28 right now maybe get the lows down to 22 
picked up some of the Legacy Premium food, instant food. Smells delicious. Mmm. Okay, this is not a sponsored video. I've not been paid to say this. I'm gonna start asking them to pay me though at some point. But no, no, this is good. It says that it needed um like 15 minutes after it came to a boil, but it really didn't. It cooked pretty quick. Oh yeah, sit in the spot. Super creamy. In fact, I would even go as far as to say if you served me this at a restaurant, I wouldn't know a difference. That Legacy Premium stuff is really good. I definitely can recommend it. Again, not sponsored. Paid nothing. Oh, whoa. The moon's coming up over the mountain. That'll look cool. Oh. Nice to have some warm food instead of just some random thing that I grabbed. Kind of like what I was doing last time. The broccoli's a little chewy if I had to pick on it, but maybe if I cooked it more, that might have gone down. It's so creamy, though. Oh, some bread would have been amazing with this. You could easily use this just as a dipping sauce for bread. So creamy. All right, everything's going good. Got my lights set up over here. Really like these Goal Zero lights. Got the moon coming up over there, you can barely see it.
The stars were bright enough that night I was able to get a pretty good shot with my cell phone. It's not Adventure Archives, but not bad for a cell phone. And it's about 10.05. Really like that book. Dragonlance, Dragons of Autumn Twilight. And I uh, really like it. It's got all the good fantasy stuff. Awesome fights, campfires. Uh, that's why I like fantasy, because I love the, love the camping aspect of it. Or it's one of the parts, reasons I like fantasy. So... I'm very comfortable right now, and uh, hopefully I stay that way. I did take some sleeping pills. That's going to be like a staple for me. Um, and I'm hoping these sleeping pads don't deflate like they did last time. Both of them lost about half their air. Uh, so hopefully I can keep some of that loft. Glaze is a thin coating of ice that forms when super cold liquid precipitation such as freezing rain or drizzle falls onto exposed objects whose temperature is below or slightly above freezing. Although the droplets freeze almost instantly, they have sufficient time to spread out into a thin layer before doing so. As a result, the surfaces become coated by a smooth compact deposit of clear ice. Glaze is denser, harder, and more transparent than either rime or hoarfrost. This video was made possible by Patrons. If you'd like to become one, please check in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next adventure. But still lie low Never water down Even with the hydro Vaporize the hate So I don't have to keep my eyes low Hit eyes low Get it in